Hi, I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. Been working on the big brace project and not just cleaning it. I tried nickel plating some of this stuff. You, you saw the other videos where I nickel plated the little screws for the planes. Well, I thought I'll try some of the chuck pieces. And the reason I'm doing it with this brace, the brace is so far gone that I really can't screw it up more than what it is. If I can make it so that it'll hold a, a drill bit, then that's all I really need to have it do. But because it's in such bad shape and I have to wire brush it so hard, there's no nickel left on it. It's just a rusty mess. So I can certainly polish it any way I want to. As Scout Crafter says, it's got a few pits. I think this one is pretty much all pit. Just to give you an idea where I'm going with the nickel plating. This is the base of the chuck. It has a, a cap and the inner piece of the chuck goes inside of it. This is the ball bearing part that makes it so that the, the chuck tightens easily. This is after it came out of the vinegar bath and was wire brushed. This piece looked exactly the same. Yeah, nice, shiny, bright piece. Still got horrible surface finish, but it's nice and shiny, bright, and it cleaned up really well. But it looked just like this before I ran it through the wire brush polishing that I'm gonna do with this one. And then I put it in a nickel bath. The nickel bath made all the difference in the world. Now, this chuck has been so rusted that it actually rusted the knurls off of one side of this collar. And interestingly enough, the knurls on one side of this are gone too. So I think somehow or another this was exposed to uh, corrosion more on one side than the other side because originally these are knurled. You need to have a grip on them. Well, you can just barely see faint lines of knurling on this one and faint lines of knurling on this one. The nickel plating didn't, nickel plating is only a thou or two thick, so it's not a whole lot. And it definitely didn't fill in the knurls. They were pretty much gone to start with. So I'm going to wire brush this one, then clean it up with some brake cleaner. Now the buffing, I'm following some of the Scout Crafter's methods. I got some emery grit buffing compound and I'm using that on the old rag wheel because the rag wheel has uh, had a hundred different kind of buffing compounds in it over the years. And then I got a brand new wheel that I'm putting white buffing compound in it. Now the wheel is showing a little bit of dirt in it because everything's dirty as I move it around. I'm going to fix up the process as I go. So you can watch me wire brush this one new wire wheel, a little finer than the one I had in there before. The one I had in there before would actually uh, strip off metal. It was aggressive. Now I think I want to get a fine wire wheel. This is like a medium wire wheel. I want to get a much finer one. Now this hasn't been polished, it's just been wire brushed. You compare it against the one that's nickel plated, you can see that there's definitely a difference in color. This one is more of a silver, darker silver. This one's uh, kind of a whitish. Now I'm going to run it on the buffing wheel. Charge it up with some of this emery.
section over here I've hit on the buffing wheel. That's had the emery on it. This over here is just off the wire wheel. I'll charge up this little buffing wheel. This should let you see that uh, it polished up pretty good. I obviously didn't take all the pits off. Taking all the pits would probably make it so that this thing was smooth, but I would also lose any knurling on it. And if you look at the wall thickness on that chuck, there's not a whole lot there. I don't want to take away any more metal than I need to. So I think I'm going to leave it just like it is because there's, there's deep enough dents in there. Somebody put a pair of pliers on this at one time or another and really reefed on it hard. So I think I'm gonna settle for what it is right there. Now we'll clean it up with some uh, brake cleaner. I certainly do like using old socks. They're really a pretty good thing for cleaning with because they're, they're soft and absorbent and they work pretty good. But it also means that I go through them an awful lot. Hard to tell much difference between the steel and the nickel. And I don't know if you can see the colors well enough to see the difference. This is a, a little darker. Now, I know it's got nickel plating on it. I've tried it a dozen times on different things. I don't know how I'm going to test the amount of nickel plating on this. I've, I thought about plating it and then using a pair of mics to try and check it, but the coating thickness is so thin and the surface is so rough that trying to figure out how much coating I'm putting on there is, is going to be a, a tough one. So I'm open to suggestions if anybody's got an idea. That's the two of them put together. This one's going to go in the, in the plating bath. I'm told that the, the more you use the bath, the stronger it gets. It picks up more nickel as it runs. Uh, I had this one in the bath about 45 minutes. I'm going to leave this one in for an hour or so and check it. I was concerned about how much clearance I was going to have on the threads. But if you, if you look at that, This thing is rattling. I know I'm not putting much more than a thou or two of nickel plate on anything. So if I add a thou of nickel plate onto those threads, it's really going to make an improvement. I don't think it's going to hurt a thing. So that's the next process. We're going to put this in the, in the nickel bath tank. After I ran that nut over the threads, I'm going to clean those threads again. You have to have it absolutely perfectly chemically clean because any grease will block the nickel from plating off on it. Okay, that should take care of that. 
Now we'll put it in the bath. It's bubbling quite nicely. I like to check and make sure I, that it's still under the water level. I don't know how much of this vinegar is evaporating off in the operation. Some of it is, I'm sure. I only have just a little tiny vent in the top of this thing because I didn't want a lot of fumes coming out of it while it was running. And there's enough that, that whatever hydrogen it gives off is able to vent out of it. It's not an explosive container. And I know there are people that are concerned that I'm letting hydrogen loose in the room. There's really not enough hydrogen coming out of this thing to make a fart in a whirlwind. Well, it's been an hour and 15 minutes. Well, it's been close to an hour and 15 minutes. I think I'm going to give it a little bit longer because nobody's home yet. And about 4 o'clock I'm going to pull it out of there. We'll see what happens. <clears throat> going to borrow an idea from Scout Crafter. The nickel plating actually looks really good. But I'm thinking I'm going to put a coating of uh, this Zinzer shellac on it. Okay, that's got shellac on the outside. It's kind of amber shellac, so it might not work as well as what I wanted. But this is experimental stuff, and if I decide that this is the way to go, I probably will have to get a different kind of shellac, something a little thinner. This says clear, but it does look a little bit golden. Okay, we'll let that set up. In the meantime, the other part is ready to come out of the bath. That bath actually warmed up. Smells like salad dressing. Now, as I expected, it didn't pick up any nickel on the inside. The inside, because it's not exposed in a direct line of sight to the cathodes, didn't pick up any nickel at all. It got the end. Went clear down into the threads. But it didn't get in on the inside. Which is just fine because I didn't need it on the inside. The inside probably wouldn't be 
effective for very long because it's, if it's on that thread I'm, I'm afraid the threads are just going to wear right off and I may see that on this but this is only a case where you put you spin the collar onto that and then there's a screw that goes into that little hole right there so once I assemble this this won't move back and forth I won't get any wear on those threads the only thing I might see is it might be a little snugger inside that ring now but I don't think it's going to make much difference one way or the other. I don't know, it looks like it almost took off the nickel. Nope, that's buffing compound. I'm going to give it a shot of shellac while I got the stuff all set up. Then I'll have two parts done. Well, on our way to getting something actually finished on this.